remove them. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and trim up some of these bones here, take some of this meat right out of there. You can see there's some small pieces of meat in here that will work very well for our grinding meats. We'll trim those right off of there, just like so. We'll put those down into our hamburger tub here. We're going to go ahead and finish taking that off. Now once again, that little piece of forearm meat right there is really full of connective tissue. You can see in here that there's a lot of bristle and connective tissue inside that and it just does not work well for anything as far as steak, salad, stewing meat, canning meat, roast, steaks. So we're just going to go ahead and put that off the side, but it will grind very well. Put it down here into our grinding meat. Okay, then we're just going to follow this up. We can flip it over. Okay, remove this meat off the back side. As I said, it's much easier to trim these bones up whenever they're still attached. So just go ahead and take your time now. Trim that off. We've still got a lot of shank meat here. We'll just trim, off. trim this up very well. Take your time. Trip, get all this off there, and you can really make the most of your wild game animal this way. Okay, flip it over. Now we're going to go to the other side of this bone and just follow it right down along on the other side of it. Okay, we just want to work our way right around that bone. Now when you get here, you're going to run into what we're going to call the elbow. Okay, now it comes out to a T shape here, so whenever you hit that, you're going to be wondering what you're hitting. Now don't saw on it. Remember as we talked about earlier, one of the principles in deboning meat is you don't saw against a bone. When you hit a bone, it's there for a reason. Go out around it. Okay, so we're going to fall it right out around. Okay, and we're going to come right out the back side there. Okay, now that we've got that loosened up, we can work our way underneath it just exactly as we did the femur bone in the hind quarter. We can work our way right underneath it. Okay, and we're just going to work our way right around that bone. Okay, and we've kind of got a handle here that we can kind of lift this up in the air and just take that right out of there. And we're going to follow that bone right up to there's a joint here that that plate attaches to this, to this leg bone. So we're going to follow that right up till we hit that joint right there. Okay, and we're going to take our time again as we sit. And we're just going to go ahead and trim that bone up while it's attached. Trim off all that hamburger trimming down here around the elbow. We're going to trim that up while it's still attached here. Trim off all these trimmings that we're going to want for ground meat. All right, flip it over. Check the other side. Okay, there's some prop meat on here still sticking to the bone. We can go ahead and trim that off of there. Put it in our hamburger tub on this side of the elbow. Some there. Trim it right off of there. Put that into our hamburger tub. Okay, and here again, take your time. You're in no hurry. You've got lots of time to work on this. Okay, go ahead and take all this meat off of here. And get the most out of your wild game animal. Now up here, you're going to run into a joint that's exactly similar to the same joint that we ran into when we were doing the quartering segment, when we were taking the hind quarter apart. And right when we hit that joint there, where that hip socket on the hind quarter was attached into the pelvis, you're going to run into that exact same socket right here, where that's attached to that shoulder plate that we talked about that protects the vitals on the deer, the one that you want to stay away from with your bow, especially if you're shooting a light poundage bow. It's really hard to get through that shoulder plate. Okay, now you're going to run into the same joint right here. Okay, now that joint's already starting to come apart. So here again, we'll just follow that joint right around there, just like so. Take that joint right off, and then that'll take this front leg right out of there, just like that. And we can go ahead and finish trimming up. Around here, we've already trimmed this up down around the leg piece here, down near the forearm, and up around the elbow, we trimmed that off whenever it was still attached. But now we can go ahead and we can trim the rest of this meat off up here where it was attached to the shoulder plate. We can go ahead now and trim that up. But we've already got the majority of our trimming done because we did it while it was still attached to the entire shoulder. Okay, trim that up. All right, now we're on to the shoulder plate. Now if we flip this over, okay, to the outside, I guess we'll call this the inside. This is the side where it was attached to the rib cage of the animal. If we flip it over to the outside where the hide was attached, you're gonna, if you run your hand up and down the outside of that, you'll feel it and there's a plate bone, a ridge bone, right down the very center of that. And if you take your knife and you just go across there, you'll hit it, okay? And as soon as you hit that bone, that's the bone that we wanna be on. There's two sides to it, 
Okay, this side is the shoulder quad, this side is the mock tender. But we don't need to call those fancy terms. We can just we just know that there's a ridge bone that falls right down the center of that, and we can see it right there. Okay? Now what we want to do is we want to take our knife and we want to follow down on the left side of the ridge bone. Okay, just like so. And then we want to follow down on the right side of the ridge bone. Just like so. Now we can really see that bone defined right there. Okay? Now what we want to do is just start pulling on that. Okay, and we can just work at that, strip that right back. We can use our knife a little bit if we want to. Okay, and just pull that right back off there. And now after you come down out of there, it's just a flat bone out on both sides. So we're gonna follow that right down, just like so. Take that right off of there. Okay, and then that ends right here. There's one short side, one long side. Okay, now we'll head out on the long side here. Pull that straight out. As I said, a lot of it you can just pull with your hand. Pull that out there very cleanly, very nicely. Pull it right out, just like so. Okay, once we get that exposed, here again we want to save, follow the same deboning principles that we talked about earlier and go ahead and trim this up really nice while it's still attached to the rest of the shoulder. This makes it a lot easier to trim up and clean up. We can really get that off there because we've got that muscle holding it still for us. Okay, so trim this up very well here. There we go. We can use that for hammer. Now what we have here is just a little handle. We can use this ridge bone right here that we cut down on the left side of, down on the right side of. Now if this deer is a big doe like we talked about earlier, and that ridge bone's covered in fat, you may have a little bit of difficulty finding it, and you may actually want to go ahead and shave and remove all that fat before you're going to be able to find that ridge bone. Now remember, the ridge bone is on the side that the hide's attached to. It's not on the inside, in the armpit area, it's on the outside where the hide's attached to. Okay, now what we want to do is we'll use that ridge bone as a little handle. And we'll lift up on that, get it up in the air, and then all we want to do is just cut right underneath that socket, right in that ball joint right there, where that was attached to that leg bone, right here. Okay, we want to go ahead and cut right underneath that, and just follow that right back. Now the underside of this bone is just completely flat. It's flat just like a plate. Okay, so we want to lean that up in the air. And we just want to take our time and just stay really close to the bone. Like I said, this boning and fillet knife right here works very, very well for this because it's a very flexible blade. Okay, it works very well for just staying right next to that plate bone and just shave that right back. We want to pull that bone out of there just as clean as we possibly can. Just like so. Now we can go ahead and take our time now and just trim off any other trimmings off of here that we find. As I said before, we want to make the most of our wild game animal. So we're going to trim that off, trim this up very well, take off anything that might be on there. Okay. Now this also works great as a bone. Some people take these bones right here, these plate bones, boil these down, clean all the meat off of them put them in bleach and bleach them out for a few days to sanitize them and disinfect them. And then you can go ahead and paint murals on these shoulder blades. Make it a very, very pretty house. Okay, it goes off to the side. And now, we're going to section and seam apart the shoulder. Now the shoulder is a very undervalued cut of meat in the wild game animal, as well as in the beef. Now this would be classified as the chuck in your wild game animal. Now what we need to do here is just seam this apart exactly as we did the hindquarter. Now there's different segments of meat in here, and sometimes the shoulder is very, very difficult to find in the different seams and different sections of meat. So what we'll have you do is just do the same thing like we did in the hindquarter. Just start pulling on it, and you'll see the different sections and segments beginning to form in front of you. Like right here, this mock tender is beginning to come out of here. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove it. It came right out. See there? That's a very nice cut of meat right there. That's called the mock tender. It actually emulates a fillet. Okay, we can set that off to the side. All right, now I see another piece here pulling loose. So I'm going to go ahead and seam it out of there. And here's a very nice piece of meat that's coming out of that shoulder. Okay, we're going to lay it off to the side. All right, now here we've got some fat, some connective tissue. We're going to take that out of there. Put that in our scrap pile. Okay. Take the rest of this fat off here because like we said earlier, fat is wild game fat. It gives you a very undesirable flavor. So 
So we're going to go ahead and skim all that fat off of there. Take that out of there. Work our way through here. And then we're going to follow the same procedures that we followed in the hind quarter. The same trimming procedures will apply. It doesn't matter what you're cutting up. The same trimming procedures will apply. We're going to trim off all the fat, all the gristle, and all the sinew. And then you can cut steaks out of what you'd like. You can use it, or if your family uses a lot.